Jen Cushman, the Director of Education for Ice Resin here. I have got some really great techniques for you using Susan Leonard Casmer Ice Resin products. So please, stay with me and let's have some fun. Thanks for joining me today. I am going to show you how to use the Ice Resin Molding Putty. But first, what I want to do is I want to talk to you a little about the Ice Resin Studio Sheets. These are incredible. The one I have right now underneath here is the um, larger size. It is the um, regular size craft sheets that you'll see from Ranger. And it is a nice, great size to be able to use on your workbench. The other thing we have is we have a couple of studio sheets that are two 9x9 nine nine sheets that go in this cute little box that we have here. These 9x9 nine nine sheets are perfect for jewelry. They are also great that when you're traveling and that when you're going places and you really don't feel like taking your big sheet with you and you might actually just have a smaller space to work on, they're also perfect because they are great for bezels and for smaller projects. So um, the other thing I love, love, love about the studio sheets is they are non-stick. So you really have to have this when working with ice resin. This is a drip of resin and it's been dried and it dropped right on the studio sheet. And when it was done and over with, I peeled this right off and it was no big deal. So anything else you have, you're not gonna be able to have the resin peel right off of this. So there's no mistakes with these studio sheets. You gotta have them. Okay, so what I wanna do right now is I wanna talk a little bit about the ice resin molding putty. And we are going to do some casting. So casting is um, an amazing thing. Susan developed ice resin and when she developed it, she actually started casting objects with them immediately. And this has actually become one of my favorite techniques to do casting. It's also a technique of, a favorite technique of thousands of other jewelry artists. And what's great about it, particularly if you are into mixed media, is that you can take your found objects and you can make a resin casting of them. So if you do assemblage or you do other things and you're always thinking about your precious and you don't wanna use your original objects, you can make a mold and then you can cast it in resin and then you can use it again and again and again. So the thing about the molding putty is it comes in two parts. You have a part A and you have a part B and they must be used together just like ice resin, part A and part B. So in order to make a mold, what you wanna do is you want to take this and pinch off two equal amounts of the gray material and then also the white material. Now they don't have to be exact, but it does help if you get them really close. So what I like to do is I like to pinch them off and then I like to put them in two little balls and then that just helps me to eyeball it a little bit better. So I can see that's pretty good. I just have a tad bit more of the gray than I do of the white. So then I'll just go ahead and I will pinch that off. And then what I'll do is I will close up the lids and put this aside. So now I will take my object that I wanna mold. This is a frozen Char Charlotte doll. I call these little tea babies, they are so cute. So now what I wanna do is I wanna take my two parts and I wanna start mixing them together. I like using the tips of my finger because this is heat activated and you only have about five minutes open working time with this in order to make a mold. So I'll use the tips of my finger and I will start putting the two parts together. You will know that that's all working well when there are no striations in there and it turns a light gray color. At this point, you can go ahead and put it into the palm of your hands and you can roll it into a ball. I like to keep it nice and fat there so I have plenty of material to do around my cast. And I also like to do it in the shape of my object. I like to take the pad of my finger and I'll go ahead and I'll make that nice and smooth because you wanna get a really good cast. Now what I'll do is I'll put my object in there and I'll start pressing it down 
and then I will start moving the putty up and around my object. Again, you want to work quickly. You have about five minutes before this sets up. Okay. And then what I like to do is I like to hold the mold with my hands just really gently for a few extra minutes. And then what that does is that allows the mold to stay nice and tight fitting against the object. I could put it right down, but one of the things is it might bag open a little bit or just pull away from the edges and the sides. So I like to just sit here and hold it. Okay, so that is basically how you make a mold of a found object using the molding putty. So what I want to do really quick is I want to show you some molds that I've made and some that I've already poured ice resin into. So this is that same little frozen Charlotte doll, the Tea Party mold. After I've, the resin has already dried, this is what you do. You just slightly bend it open. It's got great elasticity. And then I can pull my resin piece right out. You can see the incredible detail that we have picked up with this molding putty. It is absolutely gorgeous. There's no bubbles to it. It's a perfect cast every single time. You can reuse this mold 20, 30, 35 times. And um, so it's very important to make a really good cast out of it because once you make your mold, you can reuse it. You can use it in resin. You can mold it, put it in polymer clay. You can use it for paper clay. This is a lock that I made a mold of. You can see that it came out and I have a resin lock. And this is a gear. This was a really deep cast. I've got it nice and tight against there. So this one is really nice and tight. But you can see how flexible it is. And now I've pulled out the gear. So these are my resin castings. I can go ahead and rub color onto these. I can put iced enamels on them. I can go ahead and I can fix them for other mixed media and jewelry product projects. The last thing I want to do is I want to show you how to go ahead and pour the resin into the mold. So this is some resin that I've already mixed up. And I want to put it straight into into the mold. I will set that aside. Again, that's six to eight hours to dry, and then I will be able to have them have that glass-like look to them and pop them right out of the mold. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial on making molds from found objects using the molding putty. Definitely use the studio sheets and then casting resin. Mm -hmm.